Hi, everybody. Welcome to General Chemistry 2 Summer Semester uh, 2020, which is probably the most exciting year to take chemistry ever, right? Uh, yeah. As you can see, I have a virtual background. This is from The Good Place, which if you've never watched it, it's, it's really quite entertaining. So you probably won't have time for the next six weeks, but after you do have time, maybe check it out. Uh, it says, welcome, everything is fine. And I want to make this video to assure you that everything is fine and that you will get a wonderful experience this semester, even though it's a short summer's course and even though our lecture is online. Um, I am Professor Miller, and I'm going to guide you the whole way through the six weeks. And so the first thing to start off with is I want to answer some questions I'm getting about how things are going to work. The first thing to understand is we are going to go to lab. We are going to physically be in lab. And there's a couple of rules that we have to institute beyond our normal safety rules uh, due to COVID. So I want to touch base on those. We are going to meet in lab for the first time on Tuesday, July 8th. And you need to come prepared and kind of understanding how everything is going to be um, set up because we are going to have to have some like highly structured um, entrance and exit procedures in order to make sure that we are able to social distance. The first thing to understand is that um, our college is requiring everybody to wear face masks. If you don't have a face mask, I'm going to put a table um, out in the hallway for you to grab a mask um, as you enter the building. When you come in the building, it's a good idea to enter from the side of the building that's next to the academic building. So let me show you a map. Okay, so this is off of our NBCC website and I have flipped it over because this is how I imagine the campus looks. Um, the academic building is this building here. This is our big gym. Uh, this is the big white square building, Payne Hall. Um, so the best place to park is usually out in this area. It's pretty empty there. It's called the A lot. I think this is A1 and this is A2, something like that. But you wanna park back out here and walk around. There's a, a, so the police, the campus safety officers park right about here. So you're gonna walk past them and take a left and walk up to the side entrance. There will be two doors. There's one here and there's one here. You wanna come in the second one. This is facing the academic building, like the side of the academic building, essentially. So you're, you're gonna go in there. I'm gonna have masks um, waiting uh, right before that door, sort of there's this covered area. There will be some masks waiting for you. If you don't have a mask, please take one and use it. Um, they are required every day we're on campus for everyone. The Responsible restart plan from, from our campus indicates that if people choose not to wear masks, they cannot be on campus and they may be escorted off campus by public safety. Um, so that is a requirement. That's beyond our normal protective gear that we would wear in the lab, which you're still gonna need, including a lab apron or a lab coat, goggles, not glasses, but goggles, um, and gloves. Okay, so we don't have any gloves that are extra, so please make sure you do bring some. You're going to start lab on the first day, so you want to come prepared. Um, if any of these things are difficult for you to obtain, please contact me ahead of time, and I will do my best to help you. Okay, so you're going to come in, and um, the order in which people arrive on the first day is going to be the number you get assigned to um, in the bench. So we're using both of our labs so that we have enough space to spread out and there will be numbers on the wall in the hallway and you're going to stand at the at the farthest number from the door. So that'll be number one if you're the first person there. Um, there the numbers are going to be on the wall and they're going to be spaced six feet apart so you know that it's a safe uh, distance for you as long as you still have masks on. Um, once it's time for class to start at 11 o'clock, um, we will open the doors. We're gonna prop them open and get out of your way. And so what you'll do is one at a time, whoever's closest to the door, um, you're going to come in and leave your backpack at the entrance. All you need to take out is your lab textbook or the printout if you had to print it, um, a pen or a pencil and your lab notebook and then all your PPE for the first day. You're gonna leave that in your drawer so you don't need to bring that back and forth in the future. But 
Everything else should stay on the hooks at the front of the room. Um, <clears throat> and don't leave them on the floor. You can use the cubbies or the hooks, but don't just, um, don't crowd the walkway there, okay? So you're gonna go to your numbered station. Um, so if you were standing at number one in the hallway, you're going to station number one, which will be closest to the door because you will be the last person in the room. Okay, so that's kind of how it's going to work. We will try to guide you verbally as you're walking in. It's going to be loud in the lab because we have to have all of our ventilation turned on. Um, but that's another mechanism we're using to keep everybody as safe as possible. As you walk in, there's going to be hand sanitizer there for you to use. Please do so. It does kill viruses. I have tested it. So it's important for you to do that, um, at least when you get there and when, when you leave. Okay. Um, so you're gonna go to your station. The first thing we have to do is clear out our drawers. Okay, so because the spring semester was interrupted, um, there may be chemicals in your drawer. There may be um, lab safety equipment that belongs to another student. What we're gonna do is you are going to set those items on the bench to the side, sort of out of your way. And um, after lab, the technician and I will clean that all up, okay? But that means you need to have eyeglasses, um, goggles on and gloves on before you open your drawer because there's probably things in there. Once you have it all cleaned up and ready to go, make sure to wash the test tubes. One of the main sources of problem in this experiment is contamination. So remember from the very first experiment, and 141, you have to rinse things at least three times to get them clean, okay? Soap and a scrub brush are great, but even still, you're not gonna get everything out unless you rinse multiple times. Um, and that's going to apply throughout the semester, so make sure that you keep that in mind. Okay, so um, the next thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna be able to start the lab. That's assuming that you have watched the safety video taken the safety quiz at the beginning of lab that will be a paper quiz that you're gonna do. It'll be on your bench when you get there. And that you've cleaned out your drawer and you're ready to go. In order to be ready to go, you need to read two chapters of the lab text. Chapter eight gives you guidance about um, like what to expect, how the lab is set up. Some, some especially important are the pages where it defines terms like um, decant, Okay, so there's uh, some reading there that you want to do and maybe take some notes about it. Um, for further details on that, you want to check out the link in module four that's called pre-lab reading. Okay, we are also going to upload digital copies of the textbook for chapter eight and chapter nine, which are the stuff you're going to begin with. Um, check that out before you come to lab on Tuesday so you're prepared to start. Okay. The more time, this is an independent exercise in the lab, so the more time you have to actually do the chemistry in the lab versus like reading or, you know, doing unrelated tasks, the more time you have to actually do the chemistry, the, the sooner you will finish it. And if you finish early, guess what? You don't have to come to lab except for four specific dates that are on your syllabus where we will have experiments that are not part of the fall scheme. Okay? So. That's the plan for lab. We meet for lab from 11 to 2, well, 11 to 1.50 on um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for the next six weeks. There are three exceptions to those dates. Make sure you check those out. They're later in the semester. That's because we have 18 lab days scheduled and we're only supposed to have 15 based on what a credit hour for a lab means. Um, so that's how lab is going to work. Um, we're also going to take a break halfway through. If the weather isn't too terrible, we're going to go outside. Um, normally, you know, you can do that in a normal class at any time, but in this case, we really can't do it at random intervals. Um, we have to kind of all leave the room at once because of space issues. You need to keep six feet away from each person. Um, there will be tape on the floor to let you know what areas are safe to walk in if you have to. Um, let's say you need to go to the bathroom in the middle of lab or something like that. Uh, ideally, go to the bathroom before you get to campus. That's my advice, but not always possible, I know. Okay, so we are gonna take a 10 minute break 
halfway through the lab. So an hour and a half in, I'm going to ask everybody to turn off the gas and pause what they're doing. So you should be prepared for that, right? So if we start lab at 11, around 1230, we're going to have a break. And I'll announce it in class, but it may be difficult to hear. Um, so what we're going to do is just kind of sort of spread out, go take a break, take your, your mask off if you're outside by yourself kind of thing. But then that'll be 10 minutes, and then we'll come back in the building and resume lab. Um, So if you have any questions about how the lab is going to be structured, feel free to reach out to me. Um, there will be two people who need to start on chapter 10. And I, if you are one of those two people, I will send you an email individually. So make sure you're checking your email. Um, the reason for that is just when we get to chapter 10, everybody needs to use a hood and we only have 10 of them. And we have 12 people in the class. So um, if that's not you, don't worry about it. I'm selecting those people intentionally and carefully because I, I'm familiar with their lab skills. Um, so check your email. Otherwise, everybody's going to start on chapter nine and um, kind of get a feel for how the qualitative analysis scheme goes. It's really important that you get my signature as you make each precipitate at the end of, of the flow chart. OK, so in the lab four module, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Make sure you check out those videos before Tuesday. OK, now as far as lecture goes, uh, I sent out a survey a couple of weeks ago. And many, many, many of you, in fact, everybody except for, for one person, wanted to have synchronous class sessions. And I think we missed that from, from the spring being interrupted. We missed that social aspect of school. Um, and I also think it's easier to learn together than by ourselves. So the way the course is structured is you're going to look at some reading and some videos and taking some notes before we meet each time. And then we're going to meet twice a week. Right now, I'm thinking we're going to meet Monday and Friday during our normal lab time, because I think maybe that that's a, a good time for people. I'm just guessing, so we might need to change that. OK, but we'll see where everybody lands on that timing. So that means that our first synchronous um, class session is going to be on Friday. Okay, um, the 10th, actually. And so you have some reading and some videos to look at beforehand for lecture um, so that you know you're prepared for what we're going to do together in class on Friday. And so I'm not going to stand there and lecture a whole bunch. What's going to happen is, is maybe I introduce for five minutes, and then you're going to do some work. Um, and this work is graded. And so it's important for you to make time to do that throughout the week. OK, and so we're going to have that twice a week, every week. That's only 12 sessions. Um, so you should plan for that. In addition to that, I will have office hours where you can come and ask me questions less structured than our synchronous meetings. Uh, the synchronous meetings will be recorded. So if somebody has a conflict, they can watch the recording. It's not as good as, as working on it in person, because you can't ask questions live. but. Um, you can always send me an email, and we also have discussion forums where you can ask people questions. Um, if you miss class, you need, to, you need to reach out to me, and we need to make some arrangements for you to do the work anyway. It's important to keep um, in communication so we can make sure that you get all the material that you need. Not just watching the recording. There's more to it than that. So make sure you reach out and tell me um, what's going on, and we can work with it. So that's basically how the course is going to be structured. I hope that answers any questions you might have. If not, the syllabus will, will certainly answer your questions. I have a lot more details there. Um, I put as much information as I could think of there. So hopefully that's helpful to you. So go check that out. And um, I really look forward to the semester. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And we can use the technology in fun ways, like my cool screen. And have the ability to still meet in person and do labs for real, which is critical in chemistry. So I think this will be a good balance of safety and um, still hands-on work. If you have any questions or concerns, you can always reach out to me. My email address is amiller at mvcc.edu. I'll see you Tuesday. <laughs>